Well, things got spicy today as Podcast P hopped on the old pod and hinted at his future. Could a move be on the horizon? We'll talk about some of his interesting comments and how they relate to the Sixers, the rest of the NBA, and the whole free agent class. But welcome on in. This is Philly Take with RB. I'm RB. Do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up button. Do me a solid. Show some support for the channel if you enjoy these videos and subscribe to the channel. But We are back today, and I took time to listen to the full episode of Podcast P, a.k.a. Paul George, who right now is one of the most intriguing free agents. Will he depart from the L.A. Clippers? And I think today provided a little bit of clarity. People are starting to put together the puzzle a bit. The other day, we saw him on TV and Joel Embiid with the side eye, almost in a way saying, yo, come play with me and Tyrese in Philadelphia. But could it actually happen? Give me your thoughts down below. I want to go over a couple quick pieces of news just to keep Sixer Nation intact. Uh, Keith Pompey reported additionally to what we heard yesterday about Sam Decker. I thought that was a terrible decision to bring him in for a workout. But in addition, they have Tony Bradley, former Sixer. Some will call him a Sixers legend. Jared Culver and Stanley Johnson. All these guys coming in for workouts with the Sixers again. This makes me feel like they are going for a star and they're going to have to fill out the roster with some of these minimum players and guys who haven't played in a while. In addition to that, the Sixers could have interest in Miles Bridges. I was arguing all day yesterday with Sixer Nation on Twitter. I'm not even going there on this video. All right, we'll just throw that one out there and leave it. And lastly, the Sixers brought in V. Misi for a pre-draft workout. He's a center out of Baylor. I've seen this guy mocked mostly in the 20s, late 20s, and the fact that they're working him out makes me a little bit concerned, right, to get a backup center at number 16, especially a guy like this. Pretty good upside, but really not much of an offensive bag. He's a shot blocker, he's a rim runner, and he can do all the dirty work, but do they want to spend a 16th overall pick on this guy? We'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't even know if they're going to keep the pick, but let's talk about Podcast P. Paul George, this is the first time, like I said, I actually listened to a full episode of his pod. And I got to be honest, it was enjoyable, Uh, very well spoken, a lot of good insight. And he talked about his time on TV, amongst many other things, talked about the late Jerry West, rest in peace. And obviously near the end, uh, he got into his future. They didn't really go too much into it because he can't say a lot of things. But what I picked up on throughout the whole podcast episode today was it didn't feel like he was so satisfied with the Clippers. You know, they asked him a lot of questions about how the season went downhill and not feeling connected at times. Even the one host said that, yeah, you guys didn't show effort consistently. And and he kind of agreed. So, you know, whether it's PG or James Harden or Kawhi being out, Russell Westbrook, it didn't feel like they were connected. And something that came out this morning before this episode dropped was a clip from one of his old episodes. And Apparently, James Harden, PG, maybe could have had some conversations because here's what Paul George had said in a recent episode, quote, believe it or not, players talk and then reputations go around like, hey, man, I don't know about going to this place because they shoot. Watch your back. You know what I mean? That's the conversations you have. And everybody's tying that together with James Harden. Maybe he told him, you know, about Daryl Morey as last summer, you know, everybody was was you know, talking about this, James Harden took every opportunity he could to downplay Daryl Morey, called him a liar, you know, on, on camera and publicly just shamed him. And they had a great long friendship, which was burned last summer. So, you know, maybe James Harden is in Paul George's ear like, yo, you don't want to go to Philly. Even if you leave LA, don't go to Philly. Could this actually be a factor? Maybe, but I guess we'll just have to leave that one behind the scenes. But as we got into more of today's episode Paul George made an interesting point about the Clippers and their glue guys, right? It's all about team building now. Do you get the third star? Do you have to sacrifice other guys? Listen to what Paul George said about losing some of those role players in the James Harden trade. Quote, we started the year off hot. Everybody was playing well. There was the energy there. It was kind of like the first time all of us were being healthy with Russ now. It was the emergence of what it's like being with Russ, myself healthy, Kawhi, Russ full time. It was kind of like a fresh start. Then we trade to get James, and it's not James's fault. 
of why we struggled, but the lost part of that was we lost Rocco. We lost Nico. Even mentioned KJ Martin. Now you grab James, who is super talented offensively. Myself, Kawhi, we become the dirty guys, right? So he emphasized having those glue guys that go and do the dirty work and get their hands dirty and really just compliment the stars. And it seems like that's an important element, at least for a team with Paul George. You know, he doesn't want to always have to focus on doing those things. I do think that stars should have to do some of those things, but you need dedicated players. Like every championship team has those types of guys that may not cost a lot. They may not show up on the stat sheet every night but they are contributing heavily for the people that actually watch the games. You can see it, you know, it pops off the screen and he did credit, you know, Batum, Rocco, guys like that. We saw that with Philly at times during the year. So, Hey, Philly can bring these guys back. They have the option to do that. Maybe PG wants to come to Philly and, and reunite with some of these guys. But anyway, the more important quote was the one at the end of the episode. Like I said, they, they did not elaborate too much, but if you went through and listened to how he was talking, it really felt like PG was hinting at leaving LA, if I'm being completely honest. like He talked about them not being connected, not really showing their full potential, and how the team really did not fit at times. Right, There were times where he did enjoy it, but it almost sounded like you know, he's had enough in a way. And and maybe you didn't get the same interpretation, but that's how I felt watching this episode. And he talked up some other teams and players, but here's what he said at the end, quote, at this point, it's not about chasing a championship, but it's playing the right style of basketball is what I am chasing. So everybody immediately reacted to this quote. And when I posted this, they were saying, well, you know, this guy's a loser. He has a bad mentality. This is not how, you know, he should want to play. This is not the type of guy that the Sixers should invest in. I understand those comments. I understand where that hate is coming from and that frustration. But when it boils down to it, I kind of get what he's saying. It Like, read between the lines a little bit. He's kind of saying, I don't want to play in the Clipper system of, Paul George gets the rock, then Kawhi, then James, ISO, 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 pick and roll, pick and roll. Like he wants to have a flow to it. You know, he wants to take it back maybe a couple teams where, you know, things were much more seamless and it wasn't always three stars and top heavy and you had those glue guys, right? Bring that back into the equation. It almost feels like he wants a really balanced team. Now, again, I don't think what he's saying here is I don't want to win a championship. I think what he's saying is, You start by building the right team. You start by building the right prototype, and then that will effortlessly lead you to success, right? By doing the right things, by taking the right steps and picking the best situation for me, that will lead me to where I want to go. And earlier in the episode, you know, he even talked about how he struggled in the playoffs and how the Mavs were much more balanced, especially on the defensive side of the ball. One thing he said, which I thought was really clever in his interview was, yeah, you know, like, to be successful in the NBA nowadays, your team has to have guys that can do it on both sides of the ball. Like you can't have too many players that are one dimensional on offense and can't play a lick of defense. And they went extensively into Luka Doncic and how, you know, he gets tired because he has to run 80% of the offense at times. And before they made the trade and acquired the pieces, they were even worse defensively. So he made a lot of interesting points. And matter of fact, one guy that he actually talked a lot about in this episode was Paolo Bancaro. And it almost makes me feel like he may be leaning towards the Orlando Magic. They have a lot of cap space as well. They have been linked as a team for Paul George. Even if he doesn't, you know, come to Philly, but he leaves LA, maybe Paul George wants to go to Orlando. I don't know if they're going to win a championship, but he seemed to be a very big fan of Paolo Bancaro and the way that they play and all the young talent they have. So if he doesn't want to chase a championship right off the bat, maybe Orlando seems like a good fit. So overall, what I got out of this podcast today is that he still wants to win, but he did not like the way things went this year. He played 70 games, thought he had a really good season, But in the playoffs, you know, it just evaporated and they didn't play a good system that really complimented him and his game. And he seemed to be pretty pissed off about it, right? He's got all the money. He's got the cars, the houses. He's done everything. He's 34 years old, but he wants to get that one final contract and he wants to be in what he deems the right situation on the court, off the court. And he wants to compete but also just have everything come together in the right way. That's what I got out of this episode. Did you think the same or am I off track here? Give me your thoughts down below in the comments section. Do you want Paul George 
on the Philadelphia 76ers. Appreciate everybody tapping in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. That being said, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.